One, two, three, four, five, nine. Okay, hello, hello, internet world. This is Norma Jo. Again, so, okay, man, it was awesome uh, uploading the video yesterday that had, like, no visuals or, like, cameras covered up. Because that shit, usually these videos, especially if they're longer, they take, like, a fucking hour to, like, upload. This one took, like, it took, like, 20 minutes or something. It, it, it blasted through. It was great. So, anyways... Okay, I was listening to This Paranormal Life. Now, I fucking love This Paranormal Life. I actually paid money to go see them live, which is the only live show I've ever seen that's not, like, music. So, actually, no, that's not true, because when I was 11, my mom took me to see the vagina monologues. I think her friend gave her a ticket, and then later on, like, years later, might have been the same friend, or somebody gave her a ticket to see the same lady's other show. She's called The Good Body. Which is actually kind of interesting. She had this really funny line where she's like, I thought that my hatred of my vagina, like, went away, but it actually just moved up. Or something like that. It's fucking funny. Anyways, whatever. The point is, I'm listening to this paranormal life. And, like I said, no shade to them because I love their show. But they were talking about some shit called boy dinner and girl dinner. Which, to me, just kind of illustrates everything that is... Like, that is just the most fucking... 2023 and going into 2024 fucking apocalyptic ass shit oh my god so echoey out here because it's like okay let me break it down first of all the 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 whole thing that every fucking goddamn thing in this world has to be gendered everything's got to be gender specific everything's got to be boy this girl that and i'm not even going to touch on the fact that it's not you know, male, female, not man, woman, it's boy and girl, so everyone is wanting to be seen as a fucking child, but that's fine, that's fine, get in touch with your youth, that's not the part I have a problem with, you know, there's enough people out there on the internet being like, oh, nobody's being mature, just because we're not walking around in suits, like it's fucking Twilight Zone, but it's like, look man, if you pay your bills, it doesn't matter, yes, some people baby talk way too much and shit, but it's like, look, then they turn, you turn around and they're fucking working on some software, some shit, making like 8,000 bucks a month, or they're like, you know, they act like a baby on the street or in the club with their friends. But then you see them at the workplace, they're like a fucking savage, fucking like chewing people out, firing people, disciplining people left and right. They're like a fucking Nazi. So, you know, people do whatever they gotta do, okay? As long as you're, you're paying your own bills, I think you, you earn the right to act however you wanna act, okay? I mean, not act however you wanna act, because you don't wanna be a fucking asshole, but you know, you can be babyish if you want. That's what I'm saying. There's no fucking crime in it, okay? It's one of the last fucking freedoms we got left, man. People, we're getting our freedoms revoked left and right here. And that's kind of what I'm trying to say. So, basically, I got a problem with everything being gendered, okay? You want to gender yourself? Okay, fine. Like, look, man, I'm loose with things. I don't, I'm not trying to take anything away from people. A lot of people, their identity is important to them, depending on what gender they are. But for me personally... It's just like, man, I was born in the year 1990. I grew up in the 90s, which was arguably one of the best decades in uh, recent, like, you know, history that you can actually look back on with details and see, like, the 1990s was about the best time for tomboys. Now, if you're not a tomboy, I can see how that doesn't really mean shit to you. But if you are a tomboy, it means a goddamn lot because... If you're a tomboy like I am, man, it's like, you, you, you're you like, you get no fucking respect, man. People just always tell you like, oh, like you got, you got this shit from the girly girls being like, why don't you embrace your femininity? And it's like, because it's not me, man. Then you got the dudes trying to fucking treat you like some fucking sex object. And they're like, just give me head, bitch, and shit like that. So you got shit coming from all sides here. And... The 90s was such a nice time where it felt like, you know, you're growing, like, I'm putting you in my shoes now, okay? Putting you in my shoes so you can feel my, my elation and also my anguish, okay? Like, this, uh, when I was growing up in the 90s and the early 2000s, it seemed like sexism was behind us, you know? This is the dawning of a new millennium. This is, you know, the feminists have won. There's going to be equality within the sexes. Nobody's going to have anything taken away from them. Nobody's going to be booted down. It's all about everybody getting raised up together. You know, everything that men can have. Men have freedom. Women have freedom. Everybody has freedom. You can, you know, everything is cool. You know, uh, people wear, you know, 
gender specific clothes or you know the rock stars are wearing you know dresses the male rock stars are wearing dresses and you know the female rock stars are you know being smoke i mean i'm not saying you should smoke cigarettes but you know whatever whatever male signifiers there are the females are doing it and you know it, everything's just becoming basically for lack of a better term everything's becoming gender fluid you know but they they didn't say that in those words but that's basically the idea it's all about freedom it's all about everybody just doing whatever the fuck you want to do and you know just not having boundaries put down but nowadays i feel like these fucking assholes they they want boundaries and, and it's like, like, this is what I'm getting to with the fucking boy dinner, girl dinner shit. It's like basically from, from what they described in the podcast, uh, I, I haven't heard of this shit because I think this is a, some fucking TikTok Twitter shit or something like that. I haven't heard of it, okay? Maybe uh, I'm just getting old, man, as they say, you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't, I mean, I don't think, sure, yeah, everyone's getting older, but I don't think it's so much me being an old fogey as I'm just not on these goddamn fucking social media shits. Because the shit hasn't worked for me. So while I'm going on my fucking walk in the park and I'm looking at the trees and shit, the person next to me is jogging six miles with their face buried in their phone, you know? So anyway, you know, tweeting, you know, getting in fights or whatever, you know? And then they're like, oh, my mental health, you know? But anyways, so the point is, from what they described, boy dinner, girl dinner is basically just having snacks for dinner. And it's like, okay. Back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, I don't think any adult, anybody over the age of 15, that's not even an adult, but it, I don't think saying you had snacks for dinner and it's like, okay, cool, you had snacks for dinner, huh, that's funny, or having like a non-nutritious dinner and basically it's just like, because nowadays... We have become so fucking Puritan and so ridiculous with this shit. It's like we have this terrible fucking ass combination of the country is poor as shit. The country is going towards second worldness. And I know that technically second world is a classification of a type of communism where it follows the model of Stalin and the so Soviet Union, whereas third world follows the model of Mao. But I'm not talking about that shit, okay? I'm talking about the colloquial, you know, um, you know, just person on the street, like, uh, type of definition, you know, the social, socially accepted definition, the slangy definition, if you will, where first world means that your country is up on all the newest shit, your, your, enjoy, your, your people are enjoying wealth and all the modern conveniences, whatever the latest thing that's been invented is, it's available for your people, you know, you're, you're up to date, you're good, you got clean water, clean, you know, you're doing good, you're, second uh third world let's skip down the third world is you know people are still mostly like living off the land agricultural that could be good but then if a drought or something hits then you're kind of fucked you know you don't really have modern things you don't have modern hospitals you don't have modern schools um i mean the image you know I don't know if this exists so much anymore because the whole entire world is so modern now but you know the classic image is like you're living in like straw huts and stuff like that um, and second world is kind of like between, so you don't hear about second world as much, you know, you hear about like, oh, this is a fucking third world country or whatever, you know, it's like, you know, but, uh, or like, oh, first world country, I, I only got first world problems, you know, you don't really hear about second world as much. Second world is, to me, it means, obviously you're in the middle, like your, your country is, it's not third world, but... It's like you have modern things, but your modern shit is kind of crumbling. You have infrastructure, but it doesn't necessarily work. Like, for example, you have all these things. You have a doctor's office, you have a post office, you have a library, but you don't, there's no guarantee that it's going to even be open. You might say, oh, I need to go to the dentist. You, you try to go down to the dentist's office, you can't get them on the phone. Maybe your phone has even been disconnected. You go down to the dentist's office, you see the place has been abandoned. It's like, oh, okay, nobody informed me of this. You try to go on the internet. Maybe the internet's out. Maybe you got a weak connection. If you can get through, the website might have not been updated for a couple months. The, the information's all out of date. You know, shit like that. Like, the whole, you know, it's like your whole entire country is kind of becoming like a dead mall. You know, it's like you're prob you probably have modern shit, but it's not as good. Or maybe it's bootleg, you know, or, or it's like it's just going downhill from where it was. So this is all I'm trying to say. Okay. So basically, the whole boy dinner, girl dinner shit is like, okay, fine. Like, it's like, 
it's this combination of like the country downsliding and be impoverished state of being becoming more and more common everywhere but at the same time the uh, becoming more uptight with everything and having these like higher standards so it's kind of it's like this fucking fucked up ass ridiculous like fault line like catch 22 thing going on where it's like your like your expectations are going way up as your standard of living is actually going down your ability to have a high standard of living is going down so it's like then you get shit like this where it's like oh my god i i i had chips three grapes one dolma and like a, a quarter cup of wine for dinner and then i weighed myself afterwards and then i weighed myself an hour after that you know it's just like and another thing i think people are being driven crazy because there's not not as much things to do not as much things to go out because that's what happens when your country is becoming second world is that there's not, there might be a bar but it's not really lit and there's not really dance clubs or there's not really social things to do there's just kind of like and everybody feels lonely and there's bad hours things aren't really open because there's nobody to work them you know and stuff like that and you know poverty just abounds so it's po this is this is the thing that people people seem to not realize is like the, the when poverty start poverty affects in in so many ways that you would have never thought like i was just thinking about this the other day it's like uh, when you're when your whole country is getting poor at the same time it's like th here's one example like you go to the grocery store to get food if if you live in a in a good country that's got its shit together then um then you you go to the grocery store most of the food is like good fresh not rotting you know you take it home it's very very rare you you get something that's bad and you gotta throw it away but then it's like okay well fine i got money i can kind of go replace it you know but it's rare it's gonna even happen in the first place because the system's working when the system's not working everything breaking down you go to the grocery store, it's a fucking crapshoot whether you're, you're going to get something good or whether you're not going to get something good. Whether your thing is past its expiration date or, like, whether it's, you know, in the fact it might, be, it might not be a matter of it being expired. It might just be a matter of, like, in the, like, in the factory where it was being packed, it's unclean or something like that. So, basically, you take this shit home, you eat it, you fucking get sick, your whole family gets food poisoning, and then you, you got to take some time off work. Because, you know, you're sick. Even if you have to go to work while you're sick, you, you're going to get in trouble because you're like, you know, you got to go to the bathroom all the time or you shit your pants at work and you puke on something to the floor while you're trying to serve a customer sandwich. Bad things happen and basically you, it, it docks out of your work. So then that docks out of your money. So then you have less money to go get food. So then you got to go shop at a crappier store or you got to buy crappier groceries because you have less money now. And then you get sick more, you're more likely to get sick because your food is even shittier. It's kind of like the spiral, you know? So there's all these effects that people just, you know, I, I didn't think about that before. I think about it now, you know, but it's, it's just like, you know, things you see. So anyways, um, yeah, so people just get lonely. And when they're lonely, they're sitting there, they got their phone, they got this crazy ass, futuristic ass piece of technology sitting next to you all the time. And yet, you know, like, it, it's just like a broad, it's like everybody's got their own broadcast studio. It's like, I mean, this has been talked about ad nauseum, so I don't need to fucking go into it. But it's like, yeah, this idea that your phone is going to make it almost like you can be with your all your friends all the time. And, you know, it depends on how you use it. But most people don't have those luxuries. You don't have tons of friends. Because if you had friends, you'd be like, just get your ass over my house, man. It's like, yeah, it's okay. Let's talk on the phone. Now get your ass over my house and let's just hang out, you know. But, um... But mostly, having a phone is not being able to connect to all your friends that you don't even have in the first place. It's giving everybody their own fucking TV and radio station to broadcast everything they want. I'm broadcasting right now. I'm being that fucking stupid motherfucker that uh, George Carlin was talking about, where it's like, you know, the guy with schizophrenia is talking about the Swedish king's soupy meatballs lesbian sandwich thing, or whatever the fuck he said, you know? So, um, so yeah. So anyways, people are just sitting there, they're bored, they got nothing to do, they're worried, and, you know, then it's like, and then you got these high standards, these conservative-ass high standards coming in, this Victorian-ass fucking mindset, where it's like, oh, everything, every, I gotta be perfect, I gotta be perfect. Maybe that comes from poverty, too, because it's like, 
you know, you're only going to be allowed to survive by the system if you're the best, the best one. So you're like, oh shit, I got to be the best. And also you got to worry about your health because, you know, nobody else is looking out for it. you. You don't got no fucking healthcare system anymore. I just went to the doctor the other day. The motherfucker asked me three questions and then I tried to ask him a question. He's just like, no, no, no. How are you going to talk to me like that, bitch? And then he just kicked me out of the fucking office. It's like, that, that is not a physical, bitch. That ain't shit. That's... And he looked so scared of me, too. He's like, please, God, don't fucking ask me to do any work. I know the bitch is probably overworked, okay? God forbid you fucking call doctors or nurses or anybody on their shit that works in the healthcare world. I know that it's fucking hard work, okay? But you fucking went to school. You chose this profession. It's not like me where it's like, okay, I need a new job. Just scroll through Craigslist. What need, what's an entry-level job that doesn't need a BA? Okay, there you go. That's the job I'm doing now. It's not like that. You went to school. You chose this profession. The idea is that in, in some level, you want to and enjoy taking care of people and improving people's, you know, like living situation. No, that, that's not in existence. And then you got these fucking ads everywhere fucking teasing you and taunting you and being like, we care so much. And then they show people like, oh, we, we're there for you no matter what, all the time, even for your slightest concern, you know, that ain't no fucking real shit, that is, uh, the disparity between advertisement and the real world is just extreme, and it fucks with your head, man, it really fucks with your head, because it kind of, you know it's fake, but it kind of keeps you trailing on, thinking like, maybe this time I'll actually feel cared for, but you're not, you're not going to, you're never going to, okay, you will never experience that, (coughs) anyways, so, um, where the fuck was I? Right, boy dinner, girl dinner. So not only is the shit sexist, why can't they just say cheap dinner? Or kid dinner? I don't know. Why do they have to make it gendered, man? That shit drives me up the fucking wall. God, man. <sighs> like, I consider myself, you know, there's different waves of feminism. I, I'm not super, super educated on all that shit. But from what I understand, first day wave of feminism is just concerned about getting the right to vote. And getting legal rights, you know. At least give us legal rights, man. Come the fuck on, you know. Second wave of feminism is about wanting to get social equality. Why can't... You see these men. Men are being treated like they're the default human. Like, male is normal. Female is special and different. Why are we... Why do we have to be the other? If anything, I actually... Personally, in real life, I think right now on the planet, there's actually more women than men. So why are we not the default one? Why does everything have to be, oh, if you don't know, like, I like the idea that, like, um, if you don't know somebody's, like, preferred pronoun, you don't know somebody, you see somebody driving in a car, you don't know who's driving the car, you say them, because that's gender neutral, you know? Why, I hate it when people are like, he, like, everybody's he, and you're only she if you're like, oh, look at this glamorous, high-heeled, you know, vision of beauty, and the fucking, oh my god, I don't even want to go off, but, like, the fucking shit with, um, I always use the example of that cartoon Inside Out, you know, that fucking movie, that shit just illustrates my point so well, because it's, like, how many, I think they have three, I think it's three female, three male, right, characters, the point is, the female characters are all girly, they have hair, they have, like, these girly shaped bodies, even, I mean, they're not sexualized or anything, but they have feminine shapes, you know, they have legs and everything like that, so they're just vaguely, vaguely, they they still gotta give you a boner, you know, at the end of the day, they still gotta give you a fucking boner, whereas us, us people out there who are attracted to men, we don't get shit, what do we get, a red guy that's shaped like a tooth, no hair, no body, no nothing, just a little square, then you fucking, the mosquito looking guy, that doesn't look like a human, he doesn't have hair, he doesn't have body or legs, you, you can give me a, a square and a mosquito and then what's the third male character um i feel like there is one anyway then there's that fucking elephant none of these shit are shaped like nice little fucking coke bottles like the way they give these fucking people who are attracted to women and then they want to and then they set up this fucking standard and then they want to turn it back on themselves where it's like we didn't set up the standard it's just that naturally everybody in the entire world is attracted to the females even straight women and gay men still on some level are attracted to the feminine form because the feminine form is just beauty incarnate and men men never have to be attractive or beautiful in any type of way because they just provide money and security and that's it they're just supposed to be these bald squares who have no sexual like attraction whatsoever 
Oh my fucking god, man. Anyways, that's going all the way out there, but it's like, I don't know. That's another thing. In the early 2000s, it was kind of like a second wave of like Victorian stuff a little bit where the, the, the men, look at, look at action movies like Van Helsing and all that stuff from the early 2000s and the men that they're, that they're showing as being like the hot, sexy men were actually hot and sexy. Because they were like, they had long hair, you know, rock and roll emo was still in. Say whatever you want about emo. I know it was lame at the time, but at least we had hot guys, man. At least we had that. We took that shit for granted back then. We thought rock and roll would always be around. We thought it was always going to be like, there's rock, there's rap, and there's pop. And then there's country. But if you live in the city like I did, you don't really give a fuck about country. Is that, hey, country people, you got to speak for themselves. And they do. So, you know, whatever. So... But no, man, we, we didn't know that rock was going to be taken from us. There's going to be no more long-haired boys. There's going to be no more androgynous figures. There's going to be no more of that sweet, sweet shit that we love so much. Oh, God. And, that, and, and now, fucking, what do we got? Jason Momoa? Fucking, <laughs> or that little ugly-ass kid from Spider-Man? God, I can't take it, man. Like, uh... I don't know. Anyways, I'm just going off. So what, what was I going back? All right. So the boy dinner, girl dinner thing. It's just like, yeah, just having these like, and just, and just being so picky and nitpicky. That's another thing is like, I just see that like the whole thing of everybody having like everybody saying, look, if you want to say you have mental illness or you want to say that you're autistic or whatever, go ahead. I don't give a shit because I'm a libertine. Like I, I say, do whatever the fuck you want. But it's still ridiculous that somebody who was making like 5,000 bucks a month at their like super good high paying job and I'm sitting out here struggling and they're fitting into society in every fucking way possible. And they're like, I am autistic. I struggle. You don't. It's like, I don't. I don't, huh? I'm so fucking normie, huh? That's why I'm sitting here scrapping up pennies off the ground and you're sitting up there succeeding in every fucking way, fitting into society in every fucking way. But you know, at the same time, I can't blame them because it's just like... It's just like, but yeah, it's just ridiculous to me because it's like every little tiny thing, like literally you, you're talking to somebody else, you look down for one second, oh, you got a problem, you got a condition, you know, everybody just wants to have a condition because it's a, such a doggy dog world out there, it's such a tough life, and there's so little spots for everybody to get a job and live and survive, you know, and it, survival is so difficult. People need every fucking little tiny advantage you can get, so you're just fabricating shit left and right, and like whatever. People will get deeply offended when they say fabricate, but you know what? Some I don't know who's fabricating and who isn't, but some people are. Or the standard is just being moved. You know, the fucking standard is just being moved to the side. That's really what it is. You take that little slide, like you know, imagine a computer screen or whatever. You take that little slider, you slide it over to the side, and everything gets like skewed and changed. Because everybody's under fucking stress, man. So you really can't blame them at the end of the day. You just, you gotta say and do what you gotta do. And, and then everybody's just hurting. Everybody's in pain. And it's like, why am I in pain? Nobody hit me today. But it's like, you're in pain from the stress. Stress just fucking, stress hurts your body. It hurts your nervous system. I know, my fucking back is hurting. And I don't do heavy lifting every single day. You know, I'm not a professional mover. It's the stress, you know? So then people are like, you know, oh, I must have a condition. But, man, your condition is being human in the modern day. That's your damn condition. But, anyways, okay, I think that's everything I wanted to say. <laughs> Boy dinner, girl dinner. I just thought that shit was fucking stupid. It's like, that's why we need rock and roll in the world. We need some type of, like, rebellious, you know, shit. Because without rebellious shit, this is what you wind up with. You wind up with everybody being extremely fucking uptight and, like, taking note of every single tiny little itsy-bitsy little thing they do and just becoming fucking androids and um like having this crazy expectation where it's like oh my god I'm not exercising for three hours every single day working for 10 in that same day sleeping for eight solid hours in that same day having good dreams and cooking myself you know <clears throat> gourmet vegan meals that you know with exceptional nutritional value every single day, and oh my god, my life is falling apart, I'm a failure, you know, also, another thing I think is that we're, we, we have access to too much fucking information, you know too much about what's healthy and what's not, and yeah, that's a good thing to know, but at a certain point, 
when you know so much, you're just trying to keep up with it all. It's just like, this is unhealthy, that's unhealthy, this is unhealthy, that's unhealthy, this is unhealthy, that's unhealthy, everything is fucking unhealthy. You just feel like, you're so stressed because you feel like there, there's just unhealthy, <coughs> unhealthiness coming at you from all sides all the time, just like pointing down at you like a rain of spears, you know? And it's like, oh my God, how do I escape? I just want to be healthy, please, God. I just want to feel like I'm going to live a decent lifespan. I don't want to have a heart attack or stroke or this or that. And then it's like, you know, if you have a health problem, it's like, well, you were supposed to know this is your fucking fault. Why didn't you eat differently? Why didn't you run more hours every single day? Why didn't you do something about your job? It's like, I can't, I can't have that much fucking freedom, okay? There's only so many hours in the day. And... People try to put so much personal responsibility on everybody. Yes, you should take personal responsibility. You shouldn't take it to the other extreme where you're like, I'm totally helpless. I can't do anything ever. Like everybody has to fucking, I have to have people around me all the time. Like the fucking girl from Repulsion, you know, but it's like at the same time, just be, be even man, be, be balanced with the shit. It's like, be realistic when people, it's like, I'm the first one to say people should have personal responsibility. I absolutely think people need to have personal responsibility. And yeah, there's a lot of loud mouths out there, especially on the internet, like being like, I can't, I can't do anything for myself. But that's, that's a tiny minority. It's like, just, you, you also have to realize at the same time that it's like balance, like everything else. Like some things you just can't have control over. And so, sometimes you have to pick and choose what you have control over. Even if in theory you you see all these options for what you can have control over in your life, you can't do them all. We can never do it all, okay? And so if somebody does something bad for them and un unhealthy, the blame shouldn't necessarily go on them. You need to take a step back and have it kind of like a trial. Look at all the evidence, okay? Don't immediately sentence this person to be like, well, you should have blah, 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 blah. Maybe their brain was shutting down at the time due to all the stress being put down upon their back. And, you know, maybe, maybe they come home from work, they just can't run the three miles, okay? Maybe they literally just can't. And you might want to have this fucking Semper Fi fucking attitude, you can do anything. But look, man, sometimes you really just can't. Sometimes you really just can't. The girl from Repulsion, why couldn't she just tell, why couldn't she just communicate? Why couldn't she just do it? like Nike ad or whatever. It's like, why couldn't she just say, hey, everybody, like, I'm terrified. My, my sister went out of town and now, you know, I feel like I'm constantly in danger of being raped. Can somebody, can I live with you, my friend, my one friend from work who I can actually talk to and have kind of like a normal life with? Can I just move in with you and just for like two weeks till my sister comes back? Like, please, so I don't feel so scared. Like, why can't she say that? Why can't she articulate that shit? She just can't, okay? Sometimes you just can't do things. And that's just got to be a reality, you know, as the, as the fucking, you know, the yuppies, as the yuppies would say in their language, that's okay. You know, so sometimes thing, you just have to accept things, you know, you can't do things perfect all the time. This expectation that because you have all this knowledge around you, you have the knowledge to maybe as some people see it, quote unquote, come close to perfection, doesn't mean you can actually achieve it. That's the frustration because it's like you see everything. If life was perfect, oh, I could do all this. If, if only I had so much energy and I could just follow all these rules, then I could live the perfect life. I could be making all the best possible de decisions at all times. But humans weren't built to do that, you know? And why does it feel so good to just not give a fuck and to throw everything to the wind because then you're you're letting yourself be you know you're just letting yourself be a human you know humans are not 100% animal but we're also not 100% planning and brain we, you know there's a middle ground that's basically what all mythology is talking about you know so that's why i think it feels so good to watch movies like i mean for the people that enjoy it feels good to watch movies like um fucking devil's rejects and um fucking easy rider and things like that where people are just not giving a fuck they're just saying like i'm gonna do anything i want i'm not even gonna think about it i'm not gonna worry about anything i'm not gonna bog my mind down with anything i'm literally just gonna go and that's it i'm just gonna have i'm and they're gonna experience ultimate freedom for a little bit, you know, 
Obviously, you don't want to go too far with that shit, because then you're going to fucking die. But that's what the whole rock and roll, like, you know, live fast, die young is all about. But you don't really want to die young, do you? So you just got to find a balance. And you just got to stop stressing. And if you have snacks for dinner, it's like, it, who cares? Who gives a fuck? Even fucking middle-aged elderly people have snacks for dinner sometimes. Because humans, we, we don't have to have three, three square meals a day. You just eat when you're hungry, okay? Just, as long as you're not forcing yourself to eat when you're not hungry and you're not starving yourself, it should be fine, okay? So, yeah, that's it.